Have you ever been in a situation where bills and debt had you scared mm. or it was just so bad that you just didn't even want to look at it at all? In today's episode, we're going to be talking about why you shouldn't avoid bills, mm -hmm. obviously, <laughs> but also how to tackle them head on. Let's talk about it. So, you know, like back in the day when you were a kid and your mom or your dad or somebody asked you to clean the room and you know you're supposed to do it, but you find any way to just like avoid it. Right. Yes. And like the number one thing you would do is just stuff everything in a closet, uh -huh. stuff it just to pretend that it's clean. But in all actuality, the junk is still there. The clothes aren't away. I see where you go with but this. Yeah, but you know, the, it's you just keep telling yourself out of sight, out of mind, out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. And I think. That's what a lot of us do when it comes to bills and debt. Mm. You know, we don't really want to face it. We think if we just like don't think about it or we shove the the invoice or the bill away, right. that that automatically that or magically solves our problems. Yeah. But in all actuality, the only thing we're doing is just avoiding our problems. Yeah. We're not addressing it or tackling it head on. My God, what an incredible analogy. It, <laughs> and I knew you, that's where you were going with it because... Hey, we're doing this on the fly. This is candid. <laughs> so I didn't even know that this was the example you were covered with. But man, that is an incredible example. Yeah. But it's the truth. Yeah. Like when it comes to your finances, you're not escaping it by just letting it pile yeah. up or just acting like it's not there. Yeah. It's actually going to make things worse. Definitely if it's carrying interest. Yes. So any credit cards that you have, car note. Medical expenses, Medical expenses, I mean, your mortgage bills, I mean, just even if it doesn't and you just have these bills and you're not paying what is due each month, you're still just kind of like you're setting yourself up. Yeah, you're setting up yourself up for failure and you're putting yourself in limbo where you're basically just at a standstill knowing in the back of your mind that you mm -hmm. have these bills, mm -hmm. but you're just deciding to put it off. And it's not just you putting it off and thinking that, okay, well, things aren't going to get any worse. No, things do get yeah. worse because of the interest that you carry on the cards or whatever loans that you have. Mm -hmm. So the best way to really prevent something like that is making sure that you're on top of all of your bills, making sure yeah. you're on top. Of, and yes, I understand that there is times where you know, you, you hit a rough patch or yeah, you, you might know, lose your job yeah. and you might fall behind. And that, that, that can happen. It's not, I'm not saying that if, if you fall behind on your bills that, oh, you've just messed up and you'll never be able to recover. No. But it's, it's more so about you finding out a game plan for you to be able to tackle the bills that you have. Yep. And the bills that are going to be recurring so that you don't fall into a place where mm -hmm. it's so hard to climb out, climb out of. Exactly. And the only way to do that, honestly, is you, you have to kind of like put all of your bills on the table in order for you to climb out of that hole or catch up if you do have any um, bills or debt or anything like that. And like you said, I get it. You know, sometimes things do happen. There are un unfortunate situations that just kind of knock you back a few steps, but in order to kind of get back to where you were or help you achieve a goal or your, your savings goal or what have you, you have to like lay all of your finances out on the table and be realistic and say like, Hey man, like I know I've been avoiding this, but I got to address it head on. And the only way that I can do that is by having all of my expenses out there on the table, understanding like how much I owe, right. you know, how much I need to pay back, what is preventing me from, you know, kind of going a step further. And then once you have all of that on the table, then you can start to look at, okay, well, how much money am I bringing in a month? Right. Okay. Now that I know how much money I'm bringing in a month and these are my expenses, Start with the smallest debt first. Mm -hmm. Just try to chip away at, at knocking off that small debt first and then work your way into paying off debts. You know, I mean, you'll find you may find a system that works a little bit better than that. But the first step is just understanding where you're at to begin with. Yeah, yeah. that's step number one. What are my expenses? Yes. What are my monthly expenses? Yes. And what is my monthly income? Mm -hmm. And that goes to budgeting, mm -hmm. making sure that you understand your financial picture. Yep. Okay, so the first step is first you got to know what your income is, and mm -hmm. that shouldn't be too difficult. If you're working a 
regular 40 hour paycheck job, then Mm -hmm. you know, you should know what your monthly income is. And if you aren't, then you're going to have to do a little bit of extra work if you're an entrepreneur um, to be able to kind of give a get a rough range of Mm -hmm. what your monthly income is month after month. But for the example that I'm going to give, let's say you're working a regular standard standardized 40 hour paycheck job where you know what your monthly income is if you don't have any extra uh, monthly income coming in from any other sources. So let's say you make $5,000 a month, mm-hmm. but you have expenses. Let's say that all adds up to 4000 4000 expenses each month. But you're making five thousand, okay? So obviously, you know that you're you have a thousand dollar profit that you have each month that can be used in other ways. Mm-hmm. Now you don't want to use that for now going out, getting clothes, and things that aren't necessary. That should be used if you if you are in this predicament where you are kind of scared to look at the debt that you have or mm-hmm. scared to really tackle that debt. This is the time that you really need to focus in on that and not focus on the things that aren't necessary. The f- mm-hmm. You should focus on your debt first and that $1,000 profit that you have each month, use a good chunk of that. Don't, I mean, you know, of course we want you to be able to live a little, yeah. of course, but when you are in a situation where debt is getting a little out of hand, this is the thing that you really need to focus on so that you can get your priorities back. And you'll have that you'll have that sense of normalcy. You'll be mm-hmm. able to feel like, man, if a friend wants to meet up and go grab a coffee, I can do that. You know, you don't have to worry about, oh, well, you know, I have this other like looming debt or anything like that. You know, your focus should be addressing your debt. And then once you have, you know, satisfied that debt, then you can go back to living the life that you have or, you know, living to your means per se, right. you know, because that looks different for everyone. But the first thing you want to do is just know that by avoiding it, <laughs> it and just like turning a blind eye to it or that out of sight, out of my mentality does not do anything for your debt. It just makes it worse. And like you said, you know, we get it there. Sometimes it just feels like, man, I'm just in it so much. I'm just going to pretend it doesn't exist. But you can't do that because it just makes the situation worse. And it prevents you from uh, achieving any financial goals that you have for yourself. Or if you do have a goal of purchasing a home in five years or or whatever, it just slows down your timeline. But, you know, we also get it that sometimes life happens and it knocks you back two steps. But you can't just act like it doesn't exist. You got to face it head on. And the first thing is just knowing what your financial picture is, putting all of your debt out there on the table, and then calculating your income and expenses and then being able to set a budget from there. A hundred percent. And that also takes discipline. It also takes some sacrifice Mm -hmm. and it takes you being financially responsible. Mm -hmm. And these are things that you can do with practice, but Mm -hmm. you just have to be mindful of all of the things that you're doing on a daily basis and making yep. sure that you're consistently building out that game plan as far as your financial picture and saying, okay, this is what I'm going to tackle and this is how long I'm going, this is how long it's going to take, yep. but I'm going to stick to it month after month. Even if it takes a year or it takes two years, as long as you're consistent mm-hmm. and you have a game plan in place for you to be able to tackle debt, mm-hmm. you can do it. But you have to have that confidence in yourself and you also have to have the game plan and a strategic way for you to achieve it. Achieve it and to be consistent with it because, um, you know, when it comes to like having discipline, being consistent and having a a set budget, that's going to look different for other people. So what may work for your friends may not work for you. Mm -hmm. Um, It's always good to have conversations about it if it's with someone that you feel comfortable sharing your finances with. Um, If you feel like you don't have anyone that you feel comfortable as far as like family or friends, who do you bank with? You know, there are resources with your bank where you can meet with the financial advisor and they can help you set a budget um, just kind of based on what you have going on and can help you with that if you feel like you don't even know where to begin with that. So if you are feeling a little lost, call your bank. See if you can set up an appointment. That's a great point and Mm -hmm. a great resource. The first place you can go if you don't have somebody that you can rely on 
or you don't have, you know, any other source that you feel comfortable coming with your financial picture on, mm -hmm. go to your bank, go to your bank and ask them. So, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, point. you deposit your money in that bank. So you should be able to talk to them and say, hey, OK, this is what I'm bringing to you all to, right. to secure and hold my money. But there are some things that has gone on in my life that has knocked me back a two step, a few steps. And I want to get back on track, but I'm not entirely sure how to do that. Yeah. Can you help me? You know, there are some resources out there. and We hope that we're a resource, too, and that this information that we're sharing with you is just giving you a little insight and just highlight on that. And your finances are very important and you really don't want to avoid or run away from debt. You just got to tackle it head on. And I know that it can be daunting, but it can be done. Right. Long story short. We want to bring this conversation to you because we know that there's people out there that are struggling with this mm -hmm. and wanting to put off bills or not really look at bills because they're in over their head. Yeah. It's okay to be there for a time period, but how are you planning to get out of it? Yeah. yeah. What is your game plan? You've got to look yourself in the mirror, look your, look your financial picture up and be like, okay. All right, let's 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 get this thing right. Yep. But it starts with you. And just know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel if you put in the work. It is only a season, it's temporary, it is not your forever circumstance. So as long as you do the work, you got it. And with that said, we're gonna sign off. My name is Jen. I'm Shane. And this is Humble Beginnings to Winning. Enjoy the journey.